Dude, god dang it, math competitions are actually coming up, like what the heck? I literally haven't done a single math competition since like the AOI me, like what am I doing? Hello everybody, I'm Kara, and the point of all that ranting was that we're actually gonna do some math today. And because I haven't done math in so long and I probably suck, we're gonna start with some easy stuff, okay? We're gonna see how many problems we can do in 30 minutes on AMC 12, okay? We're gonna do an AMC 12, okay? We're not, we're not, we're not going down to like AMC 10, okay? We're doing AMC 12. Alright, which one should we do? That's a good question. I mean, I probably don't even remember the 2020 one, so might as well do this. Also, I kind of choked on 2020, so I need to redeem myself, god dang it. Okay, alright, so basically the plan is, I'm gonna do 2020 AMD 12A, start from number 10, go for 30 minutes, see how much we can do. I have no idea. Probably really badly, but it's okay. Alright, 30 minutes on the clock. Epic, okay. Alright, so number 10, finally, there's a unique positive integer n, so that's true. What is the sum of the digits of n? So, whenever you have these log problems, you basically just do like 4 to the whatever, right? So that's basically 2 to the, or well, basically we start with 4 to the log 2 of log 16 n is equal to 4 to the log 4 to the log 4 of n. Okay, so basically this log gets cancelled out, right? And then this is basically 2 to the 2 times that, which is essentially going to be this cancels out with that and you get 2 times log 16 of n is equal to log 4 of n oh my god now this is getting an epic whoops let's move that up all right so now what we got to do is we got to do to the 16 i mean 16 to the power of that so then you just get like um uh, uh 2n is equal to and then 2n wait what that's not very useful god dang it hold up there is a unique positive integer wait what <laughs> am i trolling hold up so that is 4, okay, that's right. And then this should be right, unless I'm being bad. Oh, 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 wait. Oh, <laughs> it's squared. Oh, this squared. Okay, okay, that makes more sense. Okay, but that is basically the same thing as saying. But then if we do 16 to the power of that, it's kind of like log 16n times log 16 of n, which basically means that it's like n to the power of log 16 of n. Okay, and then this over here is just going to be um, log, or no, it's n squared. So essentially n squared is equal to n to log 16 of n, which basically means that log 16 of n is equal to 2, which means that n is equal to 256. Epic. Finally, that was so b bad, but okay, we did it. And not even right. Oh, oh, some of the digits. Okay, we're chilling. E, 13. This is what happens if you take a break from math for like six months. <laughs> I should probably not do that in the future, but that is what happens. Okay, 11. Okay, so a frog sitting at the point 1, 2 begins a sequence of jumps. Each jump is parallel to one of the coordinate axes and has length 1 and is chosen independently random. Okay, the sequence ends when he gets to 0, 0, 0, 4, 4, 4, or 4, 0. Okay, so you got uh, 0, 0 here, 4, 0, 4, 4, okay, and he starts at 1, 2. Okay, so he can either just jump over here and his things ended, he could jump to here and his things ended, he could jump to there and his things ended, he could jump there and his things ended. So anywhere over here, or anywhere over here. Okay, so hold up. So there's an equal probability he lands on this side, and equal probability he lands on that side, right? But then these two sides have different probability. But if he's in the center, then it has equal probability, right? So if he, if he gets to the center, then he has an equal chance of getting to either side. Okay, so there's a one-fourth chance he goes there. So let's say the probability, so each side would have probability one-fourth from there. So, um, hmm. well, let's see. Probability of vertical side. So probability of vertical side from the center is one half, right? Because it's all equal probability, okay? So if you, so if you go right, then your probability of getting to a vertical side is one-fourth times the probability times one half. Now what happens if you go up? Well, if you go left, then that's like, for sure happening. You for sure already reached the vertical side, so that's one fourth. Now what happens if you go up or down? Now that is annoying. Well, if you go up or down, it's symmetrical, right? There's like a half probability you reach a horizontal side and half probability you reach a vertical side, right? Because it's symmetric. You have like one vertical side, one horizontal side on this side, and you have one uh, vertical, one horizontal on the bottom. So that means if you go up or down with the probability of one half, you also have a one half probability of landing on a vertical side. So if we add this all up, we should get our answer. One fourth plus one fourth, one half. One half plus one eighth is five eighths. So our answer is B. Oh my god, is that right? Epic, let's go. North. Alright, number 12. Uh, line L in the coordinate plane has the equation 3x minus 5y plus 40 equals 0. This line is rotated 45 degrees around the point 2020 uh, to obtain line K. What is the x coordinate of the x intercept of the line? Okay. 
So technically, yeah, this, okay, and our, let's see, so if we do um, 5y is equal to 3x plus 40, which means that y is equal to 3 fifths x plus 8. So that means that we have like 8 and then like 3 fifths. Nope, that's a, <laughs> that was not through the line, god dang it. Okay, so now we have our line and we want to rotate it through 20, 20. Is 20, 20 above or below? So if we plug in 20 here, then you get 20. So 20 is on the line, epic. And then it's rotated 45 degrees. Okay, so what's the easiest way to do this? Well, what is the current x-intercept? So if we set y to 0, then we get like x is some nasty number, like 40 over 3, which is not ideal, negative 40 over 3. Hmm. Well, essentially we know that this is going to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle right here, 45 degrees here, and we want to find this point. Well, let's see, okay, so uh, if we can find the slope of this line, it should be easier. So we know that this is like a 3 and then a 4, 5 triangle, and we want to find what happens if you take a 45 degree chunk out of it. Oh, okay, so we know that tan of whatever angle this is, let's say this theta, we know tan theta is equal to 4 thirds, right? Then basically what we want to find is tan theta minus 45 degrees. So now this, you just apply the formula, so it would be tan theta minus tan 45 over 1 plus tan theta tan 45. This is crazy. Okay, so now we already know all these values. We can just plug and chug. So 4 over 3 minus root 2 over no 1. <laughs> I know how to do this stuff. Okay, and then 1 plus um, 4 thirds times 1. Okay, and that basically gives you that it's one third over seven thirds, which basically means we have one seven. So one to seven. So that means we've got a slope of seven. Epic. Okay, so now we can easily find the slope of the line. I mean, the actual equation of the line. So we know that it goes through the point 20, 20. So we can do y minus 20 is equal to, and we know the slope is seven. So we just get seven times x minus 20, and we want to set it y to zero. So we get negative 20 is equal to seven x minus uh, times x minus 20. And that basically means that negative 20 over 7 is equal to x minus 20. So then add 20 to both sides, you get 120 over 7 equals x. Wait, what? <laughs> it's supposed to be an integer. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 1 plus 4 thirds is indeed... <laughs> Wait, I'm not trolling, right? Wait, then what? what? How am I trolling so hard? Hold up. So tan theta of minus 45 will give you this... Thing, right and then that is 1 over 7 oh my god I'm so bad this is 3 fifths what am I doing god dang it so tan theta is equal to 5 over 3 which means that our answer is 5 thirds minus 1 over 1 plus 5 thirds oh my god this is so troll so it's 1 fourth okay so this is 1 to 4 that makes so much more sense so this is a 4 this is a 4 and then this becomes a negative 5 plus 20 so x is equal to 15 oh my god there we go whoops b Epic. Okay, 13, let's do it. There are integers a, b, and c, each greater than 1, such that this nonsense for all n is greater than 1. What is b? Um, okay, so basically we want to have like n to the 25 over 36 is equal to n to the 1 over a to the 1 over b. Hold up. Oh, 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 so, 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 so. It's first 1 plus 1 over c, and then, uh, over b, yeah, over b plus a. No, wait, what? Hold on, what am I doing? Hold up, hold up, hold up. So 1 plus 1 over c, okay, then over b, plus 1 over a. Okay, okay, that makes more sense. And then this is equal to 25 over 36. And basically, if we simplify this, this becomes c plus 1 over c, and then c plus 1 over bc, and then c plus 1 plus bc over bc is c plus 1 plus bc over abc. So that is basically equal to c times b plus 1 plus 1 over abc. So we know that the bottom, each a, b, and c has to have prime divided 2 or 3, right? Because otherwise it would not multiply to 36. So we know that c times b plus 1 is equal to 24, though. So could b equal 5? No, b can't equal 5 because then <laughs> it wouldn't work out in the denominator. But b can equal 3, and that means that c equals 6, and then a equals 2. So I think that works. So 2, 3, 6, let's try it out. So 4 times 6 plus 1, that works. Uh, 2 times 3 times 6. Is 36, so it works. And our answer is just 3 epic. Alright, very nice, and let's check how much time. What? We spent 15 minutes doing 3 problems and stuff. God dang. Okay. Alright, regular octagon has area n, let m be. Okay, so we just need to find some geometry. I love geometry. Geometry is my god. Okay, so a, b, c, d, e, f, g. Alright, and we want to find a keg. 
All right. So we want to find the ratio of the areas, and we could probably do that not too hardly. I mean, it's probably kind of hard. Let's see. Well, this is not even a common triangle, is it? Okay, so this is going to be 135, which it doesn't help because, no, hold up. So the external angle is 45 degrees, so that's good, I guess. So, okay, if this is 1, then this is going to be uh, root 2 over 2. So the area of each triangle is going to be root 2 over 4, which means that our four triangles area is just going to be root 2. Okay, so what is the area of the overall thing is the question. So it's basically 1 plus root 2, right? Because you add in the root 2 over here and the root 2 over there. So it's basically 2 plus root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2. That's the area of a trapezoid. Okay, and then plus uh, 1 plus root 2 times 1. And then multiply this by 2 because it's two trapezoids. And basically from this you get some gibberish which basically gives you uh, root 2 plus, um, hold up, plus 1. Yeah, this is plus 1 and then plus 1 plus root 2. So you just get 2 plus 2 root 2. Okay, and that means that, uh, no wait, this is nasty, hold up. Am I trolling? So 2 root 2 times root 2, k okay, over 2, and then times root 2 over 2 plus 1. Okay, and then you do 1 plus root 2 times 1. Yeah, that looks pretty right to me. So essentially our, our ratio of the areas is just like the opposite of this. So you have to do 2 plus root 2 over 2 plus 2 root 2. But that does not look like one of the answers, although it might be. Alright, why don't we just try it out. So if we multiply by 2 minus 2 root 2, then you basically get 4 minus uh, 4 root 2 and then plus 2 root 2 minus 4. Oh, okay, so it is pretty nice. Okay, so then you get negative 2 root 2 in the numerator, and then 4 minus 8 in the denominator, so negative 4, which is basically root 2 over 2. Oh my god, that is B. Why are there so many Bs? God dang it. Epic! Okay, moving on, number 15. Bro, why am I so slow? God dang it. Okay, okay, hold up. Let's see if we could get a little faster. Okay, so A be the set of solutions to that, and B be the set of solutions to that, what is the greatest distance between a point on A and a point on B? Okay, so whenever you have these like complex coordinate nonsensey boys, all you gotta do is graph the points, okay? So in the complex plane, if you have like that, then it's basically gonna be two, and then you have like your other two right here, and these are 120 degree angles. All right, and then if you have the other one, now that is weirder. <laughs> uh, hold up, so now what, what would that be graphing to? So evidently there's like a 4 cube there. Well, we kind of got to complete the cube. So how would we complete the cube? Okay, let's see. So z minus 4 cubed would be z cubed um, minus, uh, huh, minus 4 times 3 minus 12z squared plus um, 16 times 3, 48z uh, minus 64, which is not even close. Hold up. Well, if we made it a plus, then it would be plus and plus. Huh, hold up. So. We need to figure out a smart way to do that. Well, let's see. So if we factor out a z squared, then you get z minus 8. And if you factor out minus 8, uh, you get z minus 8 again. Okay, so then it becomes z squared minus 8 times z minus 8 equals 0. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that makes it a lot easier. Okay, so one of the solutions is just z equals 8. So that's like right here. And then other solutions are basically z squared equals 8. So it would be like... 2 root 2 and um, like negative 2 root 2. So the closest one clearly is this guy right here. So it should be just what? Uh, no, hold up. Wait, so 2 root 2 does work, right? Oh, greatest distance. Okay, okay, that makes a lot more sense. So it could either be this one or it could be, oh, wait, this one looks like it's way bigger. Okay, so you basically got 8 over here and then you got like the uh, magnitude 2, this is 1, um, this is going to be root 3. So it's basically 9 uh, this way and then root 3 that way. So we're just going to find Pythagorean theorem this nonsense. So 81 plus 3 root 84 is just 2 root 21, which is D. Nice. All right, D, epic. Uh, four minutes, dang. Okay, okay. Well, let's see if we could do another 2 maybe. Maybe if we're a bit <laughs> trolly, we could do 2. Okay. A point is chosen at random within the square in the coordinate plane whose vertices are 0, 0, 20, 20, 0, 20, 20, 20, 20 okay. And 0, 20, 20, okay. The probability that the point is within 
Uh, D unit, the latter point is one half. Uh, what is D to the nearest tenth? Okay. Okay, the probability is one half. Um, and let's see. So you basically have full circles around everything inside. Well, basically the idea is we get to look at each square, right? So a square basically has like these, uh, like circles, right? And we want the uh, area of the four circles to be less than the area of the square. But you can probably tell that if you like make it like half the size, then it's already more than half the area of the square, which is not good. We want to have it be exactly half. So what's the area is basically just pi uh, d over 2 squared, which is essentially pi d squared over 4, and that is equal to 1 half. So that means uh, d squared is equal to 2 over pi, which is essentially, uh, well, that's kind of nasty. How are you going to do this? Okay, so 2 over pi is like 2 over... 3. 2 over 3. Okay, that doesn't deem that is 2 thirds, right? And then we take the root of that. So 0 0.66. What squared is approximately 0 0.6? Oh wait, it's within d units. Oh my god. Trolling, trolling, trolling. Okay, so it's not, okay, so just pi d squared is equal to 1 half. So that means that it's just uh, d squared is equal to 1 over 2 pi. So uh, d squared is equal to 1 over, um, 1 over like 6 basically, so if it's 0 0.16, what's the square root of that? Uh, that's basically 0.4, right? Like 0.4 squared is 0 0.16, and we know that it's a little bit less than 1 6, so it's probably going to be 0.4. So, B again, I know what? God dang it, why is it trolling me with all these Bs? And indeed it is B again. How many? Okay, we're probably going to only do one more. Let us do one more. It'll be epic. Uh, vertices of a quadrilateral lie on the graph y equals ln of x, and the x coordinates of these vertices are uh, consecutive positive integers, the area of the quadrilateral is ln 91 over 90. I remember that on the actual test, I misread the question so I did not actually solve it, god dang it. I didn't read that it was consecutive positive integers, so sad. Alright, so you basically have like dudes on the ln thing, and the area of the quadrilateral is 91 over 90. So you basically have this thing. Oh, do we have to use shoelace? I forgot shoelace. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so we got like a ln a. Uh, a plus 1, ln a plus 1, and so on and so forth. So it's like 1 half times like this way, right? And then minus, yeah, okay. So it should be 1 half times a ln a plus 1 plus a plus 1 ln a plus 2, and so on and so forth. So you basically get like a, uh, well, and then it's minus the other way. So if it's like that, then it becomes minus ln a, a ln a, minus a ln a. Well, okay, so basically all the um, a ln stuff cancel out, but what's left over is just the thing afterward, right? So now we are left with, uh, what are we left with? We are left with whatever, like, just ln there are. So there's an ln a plus two, there is an ln a plus three, or two ln a plus three, and then there is a three ln a. Okay, and then the other way, if we go backwards, we basically have an ln a plus uh, ln a plus 2, or 2 ln a plus 1 plus 3 ln a plus 2. Wait, there should be a fourth one here, right? Or no, 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 because the last one is just with an a, so that doesn't count. Okay, so these are subtracted right here, which means that you're left with 2 ln a plus 2, or negative 2 of that, and then, and then plus 2ln a plus 1 plus 2ln a. Okay, and uh, plus 2ln a plus 3. Okay. Oh, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. So essentially, what we get is we get, uh, well, this seems wrong, but let us see. Oh, and then the one half of that. So it's basically just going to be um, like ln of a plus a plus, or a times a plus 3 over or times a plus 1, 2, and then over a plus 2. Wait, what? The, no way. No way, that's not right. Did I mess up a uh, subtraction sign somewhere? Oh, wait, wait, yeah, this should be minus right here. Okay. Minus, okay. So, 91 is 7 times 13. 90 is 9 times 10. Does that work? No. 9 times 10 versus 7 times 13, no. 7 times 13, how do we get that to work? Well, if we could get a multiple to cancel out. Okay, why don't we multiply by 2 to that help? Then 14 and 13 for the top one, and the bottom one would be 180. So could we make that 15 and 12? Does that work? 15 and 12? 
15 and 12 is 180, right? Yes, it is 180. Okay, so basically the bottom, wait, but the bottom, oh, oh, oh okay, so it's the magnitude, the absolute value of it. So that means we could make it either on the top or the bottom. Okay, so we basically say that a is equal to 12 and then this works. Epic. So uh, 17 is D. Let's go. <laughs> All right, nice. And our time is up, but we did it. Okay, we solved seven, eight problems. I know how to count. But yeah, basically for this one, it's just shoelace, and then you have to like guess and check for these numbers to see which ones work. Okay. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. I'll probably like finish this AMC later because I actually need to practice, god dang it. But if you guys want me to do more of these just math walkthroughs, just let me know. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching so much, and see you guys next time.